Welcome back, U Pike Coaches Show Week 4. I'm sitting here with head football coach Corey Phipps. Bears coming off a loss to Bethel on the road, 13th ranked Bethel, Bethel that is. 45-16, coach, kind of preface that for us. Yeah, absolutely. It was a uh, tough, uh, tough test on the road, number 13 team in the country who uh, was big and physical and executed their game plan and was uh, a, lot of, a lot of good film to learn from this week and talk about missed opportunities in that first half. So that leads into another one of my questions. You've played three games so far this season. That all three of them have been a challenge at some points or the other. Yeah. Uh, how do you m turn this into a positive, and how do you grow from it? Yeah, I think we just talked about really there were a couple missed throws, a couple missed stops there in the first half that really when you're the visiting team playing on the road against a nationally ranked opponent, you've got to do a better job of seizing the moment, capitalizing on uh, the opportunities you have. Our kids understood that. You know, I think they, they learned from it. We worked some of those things this week, some of those situations, some of those throws, some of those moments that were a little bit too big for us this last week. And now we have an opportunity to uh, try to put those things back in play come Saturday. Would you say your scout going into that game held up and Bethel executed better than expected, or was there some points majorly that you guys didn't do correctly? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think our scouting reports and – their schematics, you know, they, they were exactly who we thought they were, what they were going to run, uh, you know, on defense and on offense. So, we, you know, they're very basic. They're big. They're physical. You know, some, some teams recruit to uh, specific uh, models of body types, and their body type is big and long. And, you know, the, when you have those, uh, those moments, you know, you, you're in a situation where uh, everybody's six foot four, that the windows are tighter. And, uh, you know, there's a reason they're number 13 in the country. I think they're probably, you know, on paper the, the most physical uh, and uh, longest team in the league this year. So a very athletic team. Held the Bears to 362 yards of total offense, their lowest of the season, but still not an awful game by any means on the offensive side. 68 plays. Bethel also dominating in time of possession. That's one thing you guys have been – at advantage of in most of your games this season. But one highlight from that game was special teams Joseph Sandorf. He had a lot more opportunities to punt, had three punts for 146 total yards and a long of 53 yards. So a really good game by that young man. You, you saw in that game special teams became a lot more important. Yeah, Joe Joe is an excellent punter. When he's on, when he's got his mental uh, his mental game right, you know, he can really boom it. And he, he did a good job on, on those occasions. He's, he's uh, had a – numerous amounts of 45 plus yard punts so it, it was no surprise to us we just hope that we don't have to use him except when he's a true weapon to flip the field and put the defense in a good situation in that third quarter is where really you guys started to fall behind Bethel kind of got on a hot streak scoring on three straight drives there was a turnover and they also forced two three and outs what was the what was your push during that time what was the what was the problem yeah really just to, to settle in and, and play our game and we, we didn't execute it but you know I think that you know good teams they're going to take advantage of it if you look uh, we were a second half team in our first two home contests to, to put somebody on the ropes who was the visiting team and you know they they basically played into our home game strategy they they executed the very similar plan in, in that third quarter which was tough to Tough pill to swallow, but at the same time, you know you you gotta you gotta understand that most times your uh, your greatest triumphs come from your largest defeats, and you know our our guys, the learning point, the coaching points that came out of that, I think are gonna serve us well. You know that's a veteran ball club with a veteran coaching staff. You know here in our second year, we we felt like you know if you're gonna take one on the chin that early in the season with an opportunity to learn from it is is, is where you want to be. You know, the, the reality is not many teams go undefeated, you know, uh, across uh, all divisions of college football. And, and you know, how you respond to, to getting knocked down and getting back up sounds very cliche, but it's it's very, very much a life skill, you know, and, and we want our guys to walk out of here with some life skills and, and hopefully Saturday's game can teach them one of those. So you kind of hit on it a little bit. How does this affect your trajectory moving forward in terms of mindset into Bluefield, or is it business as usual? Yeah, it's been been a great week of practice. I think our guys really get it. You know, last year this would have probably put a big hiccup in what we were trying to do, but I think this week we've had a great week of practice. Guys have been, uh, you know, attentive, and we haven't had a bunch of misses at, at various things. You know, everybody that, that needed to pay the piper on punishment run showed up Monday and did it, so – 
I thought that was a good indicator of where our mindset was that, you know, guys who missed class and did things that had to pay the piper were ready to do it. And, you know, our guys, I think uh, our, our older leadership guys understand that, you know, really quite honestly, you know, just a few snaps in that first half, it's a, it's a tied ball game. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll talk a little bit more about week four, but that'll do it for talking about last week's game against Bethel. Up next, we will be with Ben Henson, sophomore wide receiver for the Bears, here on the Pike Coaches Show. Who brought the sauce? I brought the sauce. Who made the sauce? I made the sauce. Okay. Oh, you want my sauce. Get your hands off my wall. I got the recipe. Hit a hundred degrees. the sauce. Welcome back to week four of the U-Pike Coaches Show. I'm here with sophomore wide receiver Ben Henson from South Carolina. Henson coming off his best game of the season, three receptions for 70 yards and a touchdown. The Bethel secondary, talk a little bit about that. Uh, the Bethel secondary, man, uh, I've played them for about three years now. Uh, that's honestly every year the best secondary that I see throughout the season. You know, they're tall, they're physical, they're long. Uh, they come up and press you. They can bail, they can do everything. And they're, they're physical, as we saw last week. Uh, we took a few hits, uh, but we were still able to make a few plays here and there, but not as much as we like. So. So, Coach said it's been a really good week of practice. He says the things that you guys needed to learn from a loss like that early in the season to a very talented Bethel team, taking nothing away from them. What have you learned about yourself and the receiving core? Uh, just the ability for us to bounce back. You know, it was a tough week last week, uh, put it behind us, but just seeing how we're all like, all right, it's a loss, but it's also a learning moment. And this is how we're going to bounce back. This is what we need to do better and things of that nature. So, I feel very confident. So what's the tone for the offense headed into week four? Talk about where are some things you guys needed to adjust in practice this week and, and what are some things that you guys really want to build on that you thought you did well? Uh, this week in practice, I feel like uh, the biggest thing that I was uh, harping on for the guys was just the intensity, you know, flying around, having a sense of urgency and playing like winners, man. You know, you gotta, the goal is to win a championship, so we gotta have the championship mentality every day in practice. And so uh, that's what I've been, I feel like we've been focusing on as a team, really, and I've been trying to preach that a lot in the receiving core as well, you know, just holding ourselves to the standard as if we're winners and we're champions. So let's talk a little bit about that leadership role. How important is it for you as one of the guys that's been on the team, you played, what, for three seasons? Yeah. How important is it that you can kind of guide that improvement, get that bounce back mentality? Uh, you know, even personally for myself, I've had a few setbacks from injuries and stuff. And so, you know, just being able to see all of us come together and be like, all right, you know, this is tough, you know. Yeah. We weren't expecting this, you know, this this was a, a wake-up call, you know. I'm just like, we know what we can do. We did it in the spring. We've done it all summer. We've put in the work. We've put in the time in the weight room and in the film room. Let's just go out here and execute, you know. It's just playing receiver is all about being comfortable. And so I feel like as, as long as we can come together and we know who we are and what we can do day in and day out, we're unstoppable. So what's, what's the thought about Bluefield? It, will anything change? What are you looking for? What do you want us to look for headed into uh, the Bluefield game? Uh, like Coach Phillips loves to say, bombs over Baghdad. That's the plan. You know, we're going to go out here and make plays. Hopefully every play he'll get us the ball. But, you know, we got some electrifying running backs back there. So it'll be a good game for us. Welcome back to UPI Coaches Show. I'm here with Seneca Fuller, graduate student defensive back from Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Florida. Third leading tackler on the team with 13 total on the season. Had a pair of tackles against Bethel. And the defense had a total of five tackles for loss against Bethel. Really the only time in that game where I felt like we really need the defense to step up was in that third quarter. Can you talk a bit about what happened there and, and how your role as a leader on the team was to kind of get the defense to bounce back? Yeah, so the third quarter was kind of tough because we just came off at halftime and we were down what 14 points and they were about to get the ball back so <coughs> at halftime I took the DBs to the side and I was like hey they're gonna come out throwing the ball so we have to be disciplined read our keys make sure we're on point with all our assignments but I guess it wasn't nothing that I could do to help the whole team as a collective whole sometimes players just have to be disciplined themselves yep. and have to be willing to go out and play and after a while, it seemed like the defense just kept breaking down and kept breaking down instead of coming together as a unit 
And sometimes it's hard to rally the team together when you don't know which avenue to take. You could talk to them all you want, but it, it has to be a want-to thing at that point. Also, I mean, taking nothing away from Bethel, they executed really well. You know, they, they, the defense got the, our offense off the field, and they did a nice job getting the ball down the field and scoring however they needed to. Uh, but let's, let's move forward a little bit. Heading into Bluefield, we're in week four. So the season opening jitters are kind of dying down. You guys are getting into the heart of a 10-game schedule. Has your focus or thought process changed as a defense and, and you personally? Well, me personally, I just realized that as a leader of the team, I have to find a different way to be able to get through the player's head. So I have to adjust the way I practice, the way I work out. So I have to be locked in more and take more of a vocal approach rather than just trying to lead by example, try to get everybody to buy into what the coaches are saying because they have a championship. <coughs> they have a championship effort into play right now. And all the team has to do is buy in, become one unit, keep growing and building a bond. That's the only way we're going to be able to overcome any obstacle that we face, any adversity. So, so what's the main what's the main key headed into Bluefield? What do you think they're going to do, and what are you looking for on defense? So the main key, Bluefield is going to come out throwing the ball, despite the weather. I still feel like they're going to throw it because that's their offense. That's who they are. That's their identity. On defense, I'm just trying to get the def the defensive backs to be able to actually play their zones and read the keys, make sure their eyes are on the right man instead of looking into the backfield. You know, just stay disciplined, take their walkout steps so they can actually see what's going on. Everything we practice is not going to be nothing new in the game. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Thank Seneca you. Fuller. We'll be back with Coach Phipps talking week four against Bluefield. Welcome back to U Pike Coaches Show. Coach Phipps, let's move forward, talk about Bluefield. Bluefield, 3-2 and two on the season, 1-1 one and one in the AAC. The Bears have won eight straight against the Rams, including your debut last season. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, – we feel good about this one, feel like it's a fair fight, one we should have a good opportunity at on the road. And, you know, uh, they're the number two team in their, their, uh, their football conference, the, athletic, the Appalachian Athletic Conference. So we, we feel like it uh, would be a good measuring stick to come in there against the second-place team and see, see how we can do. They've coming off a win last week and three and two. They've, they've beat some good folks and struggled against some folks on our side of the conference. So we'll – We'll see what the Coach Lusk and the, the fellas have to offer over there in Bluefield. So the first thing that comes off the stat sheet for Bluefield is third most interceptions in the NAI with 10 so far this season. Kirkland coming off still a solid effort against mm -hmm. Bethel. How does, how does he turn around? Do you adjust anything offensively to uh, account for that? Yeah, I think there's a couple things that go into it this week. You know, one is we could have some uh, remnants of Hurricane uh, is it Ian yep. uh, coming up yep. the uh, – eastern seaboard so that could cause some issues with the weather so you know our game plan is is built uh, in kind of two ways one to accommodate for the weather and one to accommodate for their their defense so we we really feel like uh, uh, depending on what what things look like how wet it is we we've got some different things in to to help but you know uh, I believe that uh, structurally we match up pretty well just because you know, their defense coordinator and Coach Elliott worked together for a long, long time at Bethel for, for about 10 years. So, structurally, there's a lot of similarities between the two defenses. So, last season in your win against Bethel, you guys, an unbelievable game on the stat sheet. You have 414, or excuse me, 369 total yards passing and 283 yards on the ground. Now, it may not be such a high-flying effort this year in, in terms of stats, but depending on the weather, you might have to lean on that run game a little more. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some things in. We've all have the capability to – to run the ball with with different uh, formations and personnel groupings and those things, so um, we would like to get the ball up in up tempo game like we generally do. That's just who we are, and and see if we can get get a little bit of basketball on grass going. So let's let's shift sides now to the defense. So what's the defensive scout going into Bethel? Yeah, you know they like to throw the football as well. Um, if you look at it, uh, in the past few weeks, they've had receivers and quarterbacks as conference players of the week, and this last week they're coming off of. Uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, three three piece chicken dinner there of uh, players of the week with their got a receiver and uh, defense back who had three interceptions last week and then uh, another receiver who in the return game was special teams player of the week so they've got some talented players uh, on both sides of the ball um, offensively they they really want to throw it still got a young quarterback who's trying to figure out life and and uh, their offensive line's much improved this year. So let's talk about Lee Kirkland. In that last game, um, 
20 for 40, 256 yards, a touchdown, three interceptions. You brought in Eli and Xavier both to have some yeah. minutes in that game. Uh, how's he doing? Are you confident in his performance moving into week? Yeah, three? absolutely. Kid doesn't uh, get written off after being two-time player. I feel like week, we talk so about that every week, yeah, every exactly. single week, every single week. So you know, but those other two guys deserve the opportunity to get some reps because you never know what could happen. Um, you know, it's a long season, and so all three of those guys executed pretty good game plans once they got in. You know. Uh, the second two, you know, uh, Eli was three of six, and X was one of two, so they're both sitting at fifty percent. One at thirty-nine yards, one at twenty-seven yards. You know, so it's uh, it's an interesting, interesting deal. We still got those three guys that are very capable of being r- really good quarterbacks in, at this level. So um, don't be surprised if you see multiples of those guys playing this game as well. So your defense last week, five total tackles for losses. You guys are getting to the quarterback. You guys are yeah. causing pressure. How important is that moving into the Bluefield game? Yeah, I think it's really important to, to you know, kind of force them to be one-dimensional and then pin our ears back and sack the quarterback. So we continue to get better each week on the defensive line. Kamari Tinsley uh, do an outstanding job with our defensive line. Our linebackers who are additional pass rushers in that 3-4 scheme. I think Coach Harris does a great job with those guys. I think you'll continue to see depth. You know, we should have Anthony Grant back, who was an outstanding player in that first week. And because of some heat-related issues, uh, sat out for two weeks, he'll be back. So there's a lot of guys that that can uh, rush the passer either from depth at the linebacker position or off the line of scrimmage, pinning their ears back. And I said this to Seneca, you guys are getting to the heart of the schedule. Kind of those first couple game jitters are kind of out the window. Where have you seen the most growth? And then on the flip side of that, where do you need to see the more growth? Oh, I think the most growth we've seen probably in special teams, guys really selling out to, to being, uh, you know, team players and, and not just sacrificing their bodies on, on offense and defense. So in the kicking game, special teams, that's that's been a big area of growth. You know, I think our offense line continues to become better pass protectors. You know, need to see our running back step up and, and do some things this week to, to be successful. But, you know, uh, even even through some trials and tribulations, I think our quarterbacks last week are, you know, growing and figuring things out and seeing things uh, from a little bit higher perspective than, than we did last year. So the Bears on their way to Virginia. And West Virginia, isn't there a stadium in West Virginia? Yeah, it's, it's a bizarre deal. It's right on the state line. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So the Bears on Saturday at Bluefield, 7 o'clock kickoff. You can watch that. All the information will be on upikebears.com. Coach, good luck. Thank week you. That's a, that'll be it for week four of the Upike Coaches Show. We appreciate you tuning in.